welcome and uh, good evening from here in Singapore. Good afternoon for those of you in, in uh, Israel. Good uh, morning, I think, in the US. Uh, um, or, beg your pardon, UK, yeah. So, marvellous. Thank you very much for joining me here this evening. And my plan this evening is to introduce you to our coach training program, 90 Days to Coaching Success. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you learn a great deal from this session. Uh, we're going to be having a little bit of a, a taster session during the uh, process so that we can see how elements of using the coach tools and techniques applies. Some of you have already come across the tool that I'm going to be using today, which is points of view. Uh, but I'm going to be using it in a slightly different way because I'm going to be using it online, so it is a little different. So a warm welcome, and let me introduce what we're going to be doing. Uh, but first of all, think about a chair and what a chair is. And what does a chair do? If you sit on a chair, stand on a chair, get up from a chair, sit on it again, you'll find that the chair doesn't collapse. And the reason it doesn't collapse is because the chair is built on science. It's not built on some airy-fairy nonsense that somebody just came up with the idea. They tried it, they tested it, they made sure that the physics worked so that you could use a chair without it collapsing under you. And I bring this up because there's a problem with coach training. And I'm raising a caution here, a caution training for you here, because coach training doesn't always work. I did a quick Google search for business coach on Google. And I got instantly within 59.59 seconds, 120 million results. We do know that if we look through some of the membership sites of coaching programs across the world, there are at least 120 million coaches in the world. And that's because there is no barrier to entry. There's nothing preventing anybody at any time just deciding, hey, I'm a coach. And when they decide that they're a coach, that's it, they put it on their, on their business card, instantly they are a coach. You do not need to have credentials to be a coach. And there are at least 48 international certifying bodies for coach and coach training. But they nearly all focus on getting you certified, whether that's an ICF, an AOE, EAC, or any of the other international bodies is focused on getting you certified as a coach, not necessarily what a coach really needs to be doing. Because coach certification is not the goal, and it's not the goal of our program. We're not aiming just to get you certified, because coaching is about delivering what your client needs. And what, pray tell, does a client need? Well, what they want is results. I did an analysis of all the coaching that we've done through the 20 plus years that I've been coaching and working with different organizations on coaching. And the number one thing that people want as clients is to be happy. The second most popular choice when they're first asked is to be successful. Now, be, to be successful in some particular area. Now, there's a problem with about being happy and being successful because it's all about perception. It's the perceptional difference between what they believe they see and experience in the world and what they really are experiencing what they want, and all of these are perceptions. So as a coach, it's always 
difficult for us to understand exactly what they want to achieve. They just know they want results. They know that they want to change. They need to change something about their life, something about the way they lead, perhaps their career, perhaps some other aspect of their life, in order for them to be happy. So if we're going to achieve this, we must understand what happiness really is and what is success. And I've shared with you a little ebook that I created just for the purposes of this, to understand what happiness truly is in the brain. Because our happiness is what we experience when we think about it and what is happening with our chemicals inside our body. Success, again, is something that people want to achieve, but what is this thing that they call success? So we must understand what happiness and success really are. And they are, of course, inextricably linked, because you can't have happiness if you're not successful. And if you're successful, surely you've got happiness. So to achieve this, we must understand it, but we must also enable our client to change their thinking and consequently their actions. We've got to be able to help them change the way they think so that they can change their actions. And then we need to empower them to be able to sustain the change that they want. But nobody likes change. Change is fearful. So for a moment, I know you're not on video, but I'm sure you can follow along. It's just sit there with your arms folded for the moment. So I'm going to have to sit up so you can see this on my video screen. Just fold your arms in a normal way and then change the way you fold your arms. So that instead of right over left, it's left over right, or vice versa, and just sit there for a moment. And I can be pretty certain that right now you feel uncomfortable. You're feeling uncomfortable because it's different. It's not familiar to you. Your brain is already screaming at you to switch it back to something that's more comfortable. And this is exactly the problem that we face with clients. We're asking them to change something as simple as the way they fold their arms, but it's uncomfortable. The urge and desire of the body and the brain is to go back to the familiar, what we are certain about, what we know and understand already from our own experience. So as a coach, our job is to encourage them because changing from here to here doesn't take a lot of courage. It's not that fearful. But many of the changes that we're asking our clients, particularly in their careers, in the way they lead others, it is fearful. They don't know if it's going to work. They don't know it's going to work. They don't know if they can do it. And they don't know whether they're going to get the results that they want. So it's three things that we need to do. We need to encourage our clients. We need to enable them to be able to make the change, help them with their thinking and developing their new actions, their skills, and empowering them so they're sustainable the change without us. Our job as a coach is to make ourselves redundant. Now, great coaching drives great results. So we need to be great at our coaching. So what I'm hoping to achieve today, this evening in the next 50 or so minutes, is so that you know what is different about the 90 days to coaching success. And it is all about how you encourage, enable, and empower your clients. Get an understanding of the program agenda and experience a little bit of some of our online tools that enable you to do this both locally and at a distance. And I want to experience a taste of the program, and it is just a so that you can make an informed choice about joining this program. So, let me start with the first topic. What is different about 90 days to coaching success? 
Well, I've designed this so that it overcomes the problems that most coaching, coach training misses, some of the problems that we see with many coach training. Because coach training doesn't work. In the main, it doesn't work. The vast majority of coach training is about quick certification. You do a two or three day, maybe a four day workshop, at the end of which, so long as you attend, you are certified. They may or may not be giving you the tools and templates to be using. Different programs work in different ways and everybody has their own coaching model. Very few are science-based. So like a chair that is built because, well, oh, somebody fancied building it that way, that doesn't work, a lot of coaching doesn't work because it doesn't work in the same way that human beings think and behave. Incredibly few of them are action learning based, where you go out and practice with real clients, not just in the workshop itself, but to make sure that you are going out and using this with people who aren't really sure what you're doing. Few are evaluated. Yes, there is an evaluation that you attended, that you made sure that you did your hours, but it's hours based as opposed to did you achieve what you set out to achieve with real clients? Very few have support structures in place. There are a few notable exceptions, but once you've finished your certification, that's it. Nobody is interested in you anymore unless you sign up for the next program. So there is no support structure to make sure that you are looked after, both during your program and afterwards. Very few like to follow a structure, and it's one of the things I have about the coaching profession at the moment, where there is an insistence and an argument going on about what coaching is and what coaching isn't. Most people, particularly on the ICF, the International Coaching Federation side, say that coaching is all about asking questions. Well, I work with a lot of clients who ask me for advice. They want guidance. They have no experience and no knowledge. Yes, they may well, truly, underneath it all, understand. But they want results and they want results now. They want to try something different. So using a structure helps a huge number of people. Most people, when they start on their coaching journey, they'll tell the coach that they don't like structure, that they don't want it. But the problem for that is that it's very ad hoc, it's very hit and miss. They may or may not achieve the results that you set out to achieve. Structure helps the vast majority of clients, in my experience. And when we look at coach training, very few offer supervision. That is, you're working with clients perhaps six months after your certification, and you're coming across an issue that, well, you've never had any experience. I had the same thing myself, and I've been coaching 20 years. I was approached by a young lady, and she wanted some advice, she wanted some help, she wanted me to coach her, but honestly, I didn't feel equipped. Now, in part, it's because I'm a, I'm a guy, and the things that she was asking me, it just wasn't quite my field. I knew she needed some help, but it was going to be better if it came from somebody who could understand. In this case, it was a woman. So I tapped on my own network of coaches and looked for the most suitable person. And that worked superbly well. But very often in supervision, you, if you've done a coach training, you can be left alone and you've nobody you can turn to. So you'll come across this situation and you're looking for some help, and you don't know where to turn. That's why we have supervision in place. And the systems. Incredibly few coaches or coach training provide you with access to the full systems so that you can easily access the resources, easily track what you're doing, monitoring your clients, making sure that they're engaged and continuously engaged, and simple things like booking their 
uh, next coaching session with you. Sending them an invoice. Making sure you've got the systems available to you. Now let's look at encourage. See, change is difficult. Your brain is craving certainty. It likes the familiar. Anything unfamiliar, and you get alarm bells going off in a part of your brain called the anterior cingulate cortex. If you've watched some of my videos on stress and anxiety, it's all about the anterior cingulate cortex. I liken it to a trigger-happy security guard, always constantly on the watch for any potential threat. And anything new is perceived by your brain as a potential threat. When that happens, your brain is craving the familiar. It will try and fill in the blanks. It will desperately try and relate this new situation to something familiar for you. But when it doesn't, it sends you into the anxiety spiral, setting off an area in your brain called the HPPA, the, an axis that generates cortisol and adrenaline, causing the response of freeze, flight, or fight. So encouraging people is recognizing that we're taking them somewhere where they are going to be unfamiliar. They are going to feel fear or anxiety. But we as coaches need to be able to recognize that and use it and help them create links in their brain so that it becomes familiar. That this new territory is not quite as fearful once you've experienced it. And it's almost like the same as taking your child by the hand and enabling them to walk. You're encouraging them the whole time. You are a cheerleader for your coaching. And it's recognizing that within every single human being, they already had all of the potential that they need for them to achieve what they want to achieve. It's already there. We have billions and billions and billions of neurons in our brain. Now, you'll have heard that we only use 10% of our brains, which is frankly nonsense. We use all of our brain, but we use parts of it far more frequently than others. You could liken this, for example, to driving down a superhighway. This is the easy route. This is the quick way to a particular solution. As soon as I see something vaguely familiar, I'm going to take my superhighway route. When we're doing something new, something different, we're going off the highways. We're going into the jungle. We've got to beat down, bash down, cut through with a machete, a new pathway. But all of you, I'm sure, you've walked off the beaten track at some point in your lives. And you've fought your way through to create a new path. And it's very difficult. It's very tough. You need to be encouraged to go through that. Because in coaching, when we're asking people to create new neural pathways inside their brain, it's just like creating a new pathway through the jungle. At first, it's tough. It's very, very tough. But once we keep practicing, once we keep going down the same route and repeating and repeating, that route becomes familiar. It becomes flattened down. It becomes easier and easier. We know that as coaches because we know what happens in the brain. And our job when we're encouraging is to unlock the passion that everybody has. Much of it is driven by our past, our early lives, what our parents did how they behaved, how we grew up, our schooling, our transformative teenage years. Inside there are stories that unlock the potential because they are based on passion. What we're looking to do when we're encouraging people is to help them find their advantage. What is it that they can do Honestly, they can't even dream that it's possible for them right now. When we've encouraged somebody to take that, well, we need to be providing them something. 
and enabling them is providing them with what knowledge they need, the tools they need, and what techniques you're going to use to help them change. You're helping them change their thinking and their behaviours. Not everybody needs the knowledge. If you join this program, you'll be learning quite a lot about the brain and what goes on. Not everybody needs to know about the anterior cingulate cortex. They don't need to know about their amygdala. They don't need to know about the basal ganglia. It's not just knowledge for the sake of knowledge. However, over the past few years, since I've been moving more and more towards neuroscience based, I've found out that when people do know what's actually happening in the brain, and this is all relatively new research, only in the past 20 years maximum do we really understand what is beginning to happen in the brain. So that when you know it's about how you make decisions, and it's in the prefrontal cortex at the front of your brain, and we use a metaphor in our case of the theater, a theater stage, then they can imagine their way through the pathway in their brain and convince themselves to change. When you know how you think, it's much easier to change your thinking. And when you know the power of thinking, that it can express your genes in a different way you begin to realize that things like negative thinking, speaking negatively, is genuinely harmful to your body. So you will learn this, but your clients may not always need to know it all. But it's all there for them. All of those resources you can share with them so that they can learn. And they're much like the little ebook that I sent through to you about the happiness test. They're short, I've cut them down, some of them are just video based or video scribes, to quickly understand what's happening in the brain. It's not the fine detail. You can't go out and be a brain surgeon after this. However, I've been likened to being a brain surgeon who uses questions as a knife. So perhaps it is a little bit of brain surgery. The tools that we use are proven tools. They're using templates and using methods that we know work. And I've got a little picture here of three cooks because as some of you may know, if you don't, you're about to find it out, I'm actually a chef by trade. And I learned how to cook because I used recipes. Now, when I first used the recipe, of course, I wasn't very good. But as I practiced using that same recipe, getting the right ingredients in the right quantity and using a particular method, following the instructions, I got better. And then as I practiced more and more, I thought, hmm, I wonder if this would change a lot if I added this ingredient instead of that, or adding a little extra of this ingredient. So that what you can do is as you practice, you know that the recipe works, the template works, it achieves the result then you adapt it according to your own style as you practice more and more. The third thing that we're doing is we're empowering people. We're empowering our clients and I'm empowering you as coaches. You have access to all the tools and templates and it's a constantly growing feast. Just like my recipe books, I'm constantly adding to them as I practice more and more and try new and slightly different ways of doing things. These are all your resources that are available to you, plus the experience of using them. The support that you provide to your clients is akin to the support that I provide you as my coaching clients, my coach clients. Looking after you, making sure that you have access to the resources is that you can find it and that you're looked after personally. Because all of us come to a point where we think, I could really do with a bit of coaching myself right now. I've had a bad day with a, a bunch of clients, and what I need is to move forward for myself because I've, I've got to get rid of this stuff. We have all of the systems, and I'm going to show you a quick glimpse of our two main 
systems that we use that are outside of my website. One is our private coach tracking area, our private client area, that you would use both to learn and to look after your own clients. And the other is our online three-dimensional environment. I'll show you those in just a moment so you'll be able to have a quick glimpse of what they look like and how we use them. You get supervision so that when you come to that client who, well, you just don't know the answer to this, you've got somebody that you can directly call on to either join you in a coaching, take over coaching for a session, or simply to give you some advice, to help guide you through. Because we got the experience of having coached many people in many situations. And during this coach training, even though we're putting a huge amount of knowledge and tools and techniques into this, you won't necessarily be equipped to deal with every situation that you'll encounter. That's when you need supervision. And we have a network of coaches. So that whether there's somebody that wants to work with you, but they're in a very different time zone and it's very difficult, or they need to work with somebody of another gender or another religion. For whatever reason, you can tap on the network so that you can learn from each other, support each other, and where necessary, supply clients to those individuals. So let me take you through the program agenda. And to do this, I'm going to take you into a three-dimensional coaching space. So if you bear with me just one moment whilst I flick to my coaching space environment and I'm going to share the screen with you. So I'm going to turn my camera off for the moment so you can see this fairly largely and it will there we go. share the full screen and it'll take me just a moment for this to come through. Okay, uh, you should all be there by now. This is our three-dimensional coaching environment. And I've just set up this stage. It's a very simple way of doing it. This is the outer space, and this is the area we call the stage, the gray area. You can change perspective throughout all of this and zoom in quite easily and see how things look from that particular character's point of view. Now, I've just taken you there, but let's have a look at where Lee. Hi, Lee, hope you're doing okay. Over there in Europe on your holiday. This is our coaching journey from potential to performance. It's a, a one-page overview of the coaching program. There's a lot in here, so I'll take a few moments to go through this but it will give you a very good idea of looking at the whole pro program in one picture. So, I've done this in a way so that you can see it in the same way most clients think of their life, their past, their present, and their future. They come to you because they're looking to change something in their future. Brilliant. But, how do they get there? There are obstacles in the way. They come to you in the present. Most clients honestly don't know what they're actually good at. They know their weaknesses. They know that they're not good at a lot of things because they've been told that all their lives. But they're not always certain what they are good at. And they look to their past and they've got some regrets from the past and they've got some great moments from their past. So often when we're starting with uh, new clients is we'd start with one of our templates called the SWING template, which is all about setting the outcomes. What do they want to achieve by the end of their 90-day, three-month coaching program? Specifically, so that we can measure their results. And then very often we'll be looking back to their past. 
We need to help them understand what has created them, why they are the way they are. And we use one of the techniques that we use here is a technique called My Photo Album. And it uses the point of view images and cards to help people create a storybook of their past. We'll look at their worst moments, their normal moments, and their best moments. What we find is that what drives us, our passions, very often come from our worst moments and our best moments. I'll share my own example. One of my worst moments was when my mum and dad, who were very loving parents, left me to go to America. Now, I was very young at the time. They were on a long tour. My dad had an international job. But I was left in the UK, and I was left in the care of my godmother. But they left me, and I felt abandoned. I hadn't been abandoned. My godmother was a wonderful, wonderful woman. But I felt abandoned. And I always swore I would never do that. And it's one of my drive forces that I will never abandon my clients. I, I will unconditionally love. I will be there. Which is why our support structure has to be so strong. Because I don't want you to be left on your own. You may not need me, which is fine. But I don't want you to feel ever that you've been left on your own. But what we're looking for is what are the real values that drive you, that make you who you are? Because you've used all of those and they are a part of you. It's your experience. It's your life. And you brought all of that experience to your day job today. We'll also be looking at their talents, what they're really good at. And very often, people don't even know what they're talented at. In fact, most people will say they're not talented because talent is assumed to be something that is singing or dancing or something artistic, and they're not good at that. So what is it that they're talented at? And out of that talent, how did they do that? So one of my talents was cooking. I was actually very talented at it. If people had asked me how I create that food as well as I did, my answer was, I don't know. I knew I used recipes, but I didn't know every single step that I was taking to create them. So I've leveraged that, and everybody can leverage all of their talent to a new part of their lives. So in my coaching, I've changed my recipes to being the templates that my coaches and my clients use to help them move forward. To me, it's the same thing. It's ingredients and method. Knowing, in this case, a photo or an idea of what looks like in the end. We'll also be looking at what their future is, setting their goals that are very clear, they know where they're going, and making sure that they keep the work-life balance that they desire, and how they are aligned from now to achieve that, which includes some planning. For some people, it's about prioritization. For many, it's about overcoming procrastination. But how they deal with failure, how they will approach it, what happens in their mind. And all of these templates are built on the foundation that is below the essential social cognitive neuroscience the presuppositions that we approach, and some skills, how to listen, how to ask questions, using the point of view tools, both physically and online, and some frameworks that we use in order to enable all of you as coaches to achieve this journey with your clients. So let me just zoom out of this for a moment so that you can see how interactive it is. What I do find with an, a lot of potential clients, and we'll just pick it on Pat here as an example, is that they face what they perceive to be a brick wall between where they are now and where they want to be. 
how they overcome their brick wall because they don't see a way that they can get around it. But perhaps it's possible for them to rise above. And the beauty of using this system is that we could, for example, move the wall and crawl underneath it. And these are all metaphors that in your brain it's very easy for somebody to think about. But when we look from a further perspective, something else we could do, and they could show you what they're thinking inside their brain and the way they see it, is that they could elevate themselves and be able to see over the wall. We can move things. And up until now, it's very difficult for us to, as coaches, to imagine what's going on inside our clients' brains. So as a coach, I can manipulate these. And as a client, so if I just pick Jen up here, I can move to Jen's perspective and look at things from a different viewpoint. And because I can move this in three dimensions, I can mimic the way your brain is working. So here we have, and it's one of the uh, very powerful points of view cards, and it's called Trust. And we can look at this, and I can convert this so it stands up so that it's a little easier for us to see. And we can zoom right in and see what they're looking at. And because there is a, a built-in video conference system, we can be talking to each of our clients through their questions as they pick the cards. And we can very easily uh, enable them to choose any of the points of view or punctum cards here. You'll notice that there's a little outside space here. Sometimes that's relevant to some particular individuals. Let me uh, come back out somewhere here. Somebody said, well, this one I, I put outside because it happens to be opportunities. What happens when they perceive an opportunity as being possible for them? And we can move it around and because these are very easy to manipulate, we can shift our perspective not only focusing on what's happening inside the picture and what's happening in the word, and for those of you familiar with points of view, of course, you'll be very familiar with this particular picture, but we can literally ask them to zoom in, zoom out. What is it surrounded by? And there are certain other emblems, such as this I put here, which is, which is a red flag. They're seeing a red flag moment as they move a journey from behind their wall. Again, this is all about looking the way your client is thinking inside their brain, but they can't really describe it. This enables us to use Gestalt theory and psychodrama because we're talking about John, this character here, and his view, which could be your boss, instead of your own perspective. So that should give you a quick idea of how our three-dimensional environment enhances the coaching that you can be doing with your clients. Let me just go back and open the PowerPoint again. So you've seen the program Agenda and giving you a, a rough overview of what's included. And this was on the document that I linked through the invitation as well. What happens every week? Well, this is a 13-week program, 90 days, three months, 13 weeks. Every week there'll be pre-work. It'll be your essential foundational knowledge, learning about the neuroscience, things like the happiness test ebook that I sent out, or videos, or whiteboards. 
Learning and practicing the skills of effective coaching, such as listening skills. These are skills that you can very easily learn with your spouse, with your friends, with your colleagues. Continuously practicing them. So just like I, I used the metaphor of uh, biting your way through a jungle to achieve a new pathway, you need to be practicing all of the skills that you'll be using, questioning, listening skills in particular. Every two weeks on this program, there's a group coaching. It's 90 minutes. It's uh, starting with the first one and then the third, and I'll show you that in a moment. And every week, you have a coaching session, an individual coaching session, online using the three-dimensional coaching environment. This is with your coach trainer. In this case, in this particular group, it's all going to be working with me as your coach trainer. You'll have worksheets every week, new worksheets that you can use with your clients, your practice clients, but also in the future, of course. And you have your action learning. You will nominate two individuals. Just two is all you need to work with. You could do this pro bono or they could be charged. It's up to you. They will be supervised as well by me and they will know that they can turn to me if they ever need help. But each week you will have a 45 minute coaching session with them. You'll be using the tools and techniques that you are learning to use during the program. Every week there's a review which is based on my What's Better Today review process. This will give you an idea of what happens in the first month. Week one is when we start with a, a group coaching session. And there is some pre-work before that in just the same way that I sent the happiness test to you before. Up to about 45 minutes of pre-work typically. Then I'll be taking you through uh, using some of the key tools to set the agenda, for example, with your clients. How you work with your your uh, nominated clients and your future clients using a coaching agreement and uh, making sure that you're identifying suitable action learning clients. You'll have action learning. What is your typical approach? So we've got all the assessments that you need and they're easily accessible for you and for your clients. The following week will be an individual coaching session focused on your development and continuing your development of using the tool. By the third week, then we come back to a group coaching session. And there is an individual session as well that week. So that's the process each time that we're going through. By week three or week four, you are beginning to work with your action learning clients, your two nominated clients. Those individuals will receive from you a typically a 10 week or 10 sessions. You take them through a very full structure, making sure you're practicing because this process is for you as much as it is for your, uh, your action learning clients. I'll skip over the next couple uh, fairly quickly. They are on the website, so you can see this very easily. They're also on the document that I sent out, inviting you to join. So if you haven't looked at that, I do urge you, you know, uh, it's online on the online word. You can look through this and see what's in, in, uh, included every week. So that by the 13th week, we're reviewing together and we have a group coaching where you are getting certified because you have been evaluated by your own action learning clients. That gives you a rough idea of the overview of the 13 weeks of program. So let's experience a little taste. Give me a moment, let me have a sip of water. A little taste of how this might work online with your clients. So what I'll do is I'm just going to switch again to my coach training area and I'm just going to go in and make sure some of the names are blanked out for you so again give me a moment and I'm going to share my screen again to 
give you an idea of our coach tracking system that enables your clients to keep up with where they are in the progress in their program but also for you to very easily now this is me coaching me so this is looking at the coach's view of me as a client and you can see that I've got a couple of metrics here and I've got a worksheet that's uh, that's in red here. It happens to be three months old. I assigned it to myself. And it's one of those what's next. I haven't done it, so it's gone red. But other things are in green. So I, I'm doing okay. I'm a little bit behind, obviously. But when you click on that, it enables us to very easily and very quickly bring up a worksheet that that individual should be working on. They fill this in. And this one's the paradox of changing the world. It's about uh, it's a career coaching worksheet that we use, and this will have been linked prior by a, an online video scribe that explained what they were doing and a little ebook that accompanied that. So as a as a coach, I can see instantly get a quick overview of where this client is. I can look at the stream of all the things that they have been going through, all the worksheets, all the sessions, the appointments and everything. So we have a complete tracking system of where they are. And when I've finished a coaching session, I can very quickly add a session here. So let me just put in one because it's for me. This is my review process that I ask everyone to do every week. Three things that have gone well, one thing to improve, overall what's gone well. They would do that and then when they mark it complete, I send it to them as a, as a worksheet for them to do. Now let me switch, I'm going to go in as a client. I've got that worksheet due and I've received this review, now I finished it as well, but I can look at how I as a client have reviewed myself. So let me show you that again. I can add a particular worksheet. In this case, I can do the, the review myself. I would fill this in. This is me as a client. And when I say I can save it or I can complete it, that information instantly goes onto my stream and to my coach. So the coach is constantly up up to speed and of course as a coach I am assigning an individual to a particular course so I can add a, add a participant to one of the clients let me just select myself schedule this course and that's exactly what you'll be doing through the career coaching or one of the other courses that we use that will immediately start that course for that particular client we set the appointments in here the billing system is in here uh, there's lots of news updates and as a client I can see where I'm at and book an appointment with my own coach so if I wanted a 45 minute or a 90 minute choosing the date so I can request the appointment on all of this you will have both as a client to experience it and as a coach with your two action learning coaches so that you're both using it and understanding how this works for you and the benefit you're getting from this as well as your clients benefiting so you don't have to be keeping an email trail different systems it's all kept in one place for you keeping you up to date with all of your clients very quickly very easily just gives you a quick idea of, of how the systems that we've Put in place support your coaching and how you're moving things forward with your clients so coaching excellence in action uh, let's go for a, a real taste of this I shared with you the happiness test this ebook that enables you to quickly understand what happiness truly is and you'll remember from the book that it's about your self-esteem orientation and control 
your feelings of attachment and your pleasure. And of course, we all want to maximize our pleasure. So what is self-esteem? Now, what I'd like you to do is focus on this picture for a moment. Let me take my webcam video out of the way. So you can just focus entirely on this picture. And what you see in the picture. That's right, Peter. Yeah, it's a swamp. It's a swan possibly admiring themselves, or are they looking for fish? And how you see this is how you see this. What do you find the most important? And how does it connect to your self-esteem? If you are a certified coach, working with your clients, getting great results for them, what does that do for your self-esteem? The next picture, again, this is from the point of view tool set, that you're provided with as part of this coach training program. You get the physical cards and you'll be able to use them with your clients. Orientation and control is how well you see your future and how well you believe you can control your environment. But what do you see in the picture? What for you is the most significant aspect of this picture? Do you like the picture? Do you dislike the picture? Uh, that's right, Peter. If uh, you could see this as being somebody who's being held underwater, or perhaps he's holding himself underwater. Is he breathing or is he dying? It's, again, it looks at the way you're seeing it. How does this connect for you to being a coach who can get great results with your clients? What does that do for your orientation, your vision for your future? and your feeling of controlling your environment and the people around you. And we all like to feel that we're in control. Now we've seen this picture before. I showed it to you on our three-dimensional environment. What do you see in this picture? And I mean literally. What do you see? What's significant for you in this picture? And how does this connect with attachment, with your feelings about your relationships when you know how to coach for great results? Thanks, Jen. Yeah, trust. Without trust, your client is going to go nowhere with you. Absolutely right. If the client doesn't trust you as the coach, you're not going to be able to help them terribly much at all. Let's look at this last picture about pleasure. What is this? What do you see in the picture? Uh, 
Uh, Joachim has asked me, uh, does everybody know what that is? Well, it's true, because these don't grow, they don't grow in Singapore, that's true, Joachim, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the dandelion. For me, for example, this, this reminds me of time, because as a kid, we would go out, we would get these dandelions, which is what these are, uh, and blow on them, and however many breaths it took, that was supposed to be what o'clock it was. So if it took nine breaths, it was nine o'clock. Now, it never really worked, but it was a bit of fun. But it's a great pleasure for me, and I think for many people who've ever done this. And if you've never done this, the next time you go somewhere where they do have these dandelions, just do it. It's good fun. But pleasure and enjoying yourselves, what does that have to do with being a certified coach? Being able to work with people and get great results. How does your pleasure increase? So that should give you a, a, a quick idea. I know you're thinking a great deal at this moment, but I'm very aware of the time. I'm going to be another seven or eight minutes at this point, so I'm beginning to wrap up. But what it is, is your happiness is all in the chemistry. I shared this on the ebook that I shared before the coaching. When we're feeling good, we have positive self-esteem. We have positive self-worth. We feel good about ourselves. That's because we've increased the production of serotonin. Serotonin is probably the most famous brain chemical because of a, a little drug called Xanax. Because people who are feeling depressed take what are known as SRSs, serotonin reuptake suppressants. The whole point of serotonin is it's, when it's produced in the brain, is it's reuptaken by the synapses inside the brain and reused, it's recycled. But People who feel depressed, when they take a, a Xanax or an SRS of some description, what what's happening for them is that they're reducing the reuptake so that they feel okay. And that's the thing about antidepressants, as they're called. It's people feeling okay, and it's a chemical process. What we want is to be able to produce that. And anybody who's depressed or feeling low has low self-esteem at that moment. Negative self-esteem produces more cortisol, which is our anxiety chemical. It's the one that makes you feel anxious and starts triggering off adrenaline in a, in a little while. <clears throat> Too much cortisol in the body is definitely bad for you. It damages your body. Good orientation and control increases dopamine production. And dopamine is a happy chemical, it's our joyful chemical, it's the one that makes us feel really elated. It's also very powerful in consolidating memory. If you are happy when you're learning, you remember more. But poor orientation and control increases cortisol production. Again, the anxiety chemical. When we don't know where we're going, when we don't feel that we are in control of our lives or of the environment, increases cortisol. Whereas when we do feel that we have control, it's dopamine. And very often with clients, it's their perception of their control rather than reality. Attachment, when you trust somebody, when you love somebody, you have increased the oxytocin production in your brain. Women get this more than men, and particularly when they're pregnant, they'll have a huge burst of oxytocin, and it's deliberate so that you will 
bond with your baby. The baby, when it's born, also gets an extra bit of oxytocin, so it will bond with the mother. But little attachment, when you don't feel loved, you don't feel that people care for you. As I felt when I was a kid, when I mentioned about feeling abandoned, there was little attachment. It's not enough oxytocin and too much adrenaline. Strictly speaking, this is norepinephrine, which is the brain's version of adrenaline. Same uh, or very similar chemical. But, and creates the freeze, flight, fight or flight response. So when we don't feel loved, we tend to freeze in one place, not knowing what to do, and fight. We, those with very little attachment at school, you'll remember, were probably the bullies. And pleasure. Pleasure is something that everybody wants. And of course, we derive pleasure from having good self-esteem, good orientation and control, and good relationships. But that increases our dopamine production. The contra side to pleasure maximization is pain. We feel pain. Even if that's not physical pain, it could be mental anguish. And that increases adrenaline production, the freeze, fight, or flight response, increasing anxiety, causing us to pull away from pleasure. And I mentioned in the ebook that people can be more towards oriented, towards they want to feel good, or they want to feel, feel less bad. And as a coach, we need to be able to recognize that, identify that, and deal with it. Work from their point of view, not necessarily from our own. So let me wrap this up. I am running a little bit over time, so my apologies there. Hopefully now you've got an understanding of where I'm coming from with this program. It's to overcome some of the problems that I've experienced and I see happening consistently over the world with coach training not working because they're trying to certify people quickly and focusing on the number of hours that they attend a workshop rather than are they getting results for their clients. And not necessarily equipping people with the tools and techniques that they need. The understanding of the science, in this case the neuroscience, the psychodrama and the gestalt theory that works underneath all of our lives and enables us to make a difference. By understanding this we can help our clients change their thinking and consequently their behaviours. Their emotions the responses that they get, the happiness that they feel, will come as a result of changing their thinking because the process works on thinking, which generates emotions, which generates actions. We don't feel first. Feeling is something that we physically feel after the event. The emotions have already happened and the emotions are triggered by the way we think. 95% of it is our perception of the outside world. Whether or not we are getting what we want or believe we want from the outside world. Because that involves other people and we believe, well, I'm not in control of that. But you are in control of the way you think about whether other people control you or are you at cause for your life. It's a choice. Clients need to understand that and be able to make that. That's what the enabling is. And we do it sufficiently well, providing them with the resources and the support once we're coaches to make sure they sustain that, so they are empowered to continue the good changes that they've made and to continue not doing the things they didn't want to do. So you have a choice. And I love this photo. I've looked at this I don't know how many times. Again, it's a points of view card. And it's a child making a choice and pointing at some very colorful sweets. And what I noticed just yesterday, I was looking at this again, 
is that there's some clarets on the left hand side of this picture. Clarets, sorry, I need to use the other hand to show you that way. Clarets are breast fresheners compared to the sweeties, the nuts, the seeds, and the jelly worms, whatever they are. But also, I began to notice yesterday in the top left corner what I think might be a packet of cigarettes. And the child is making a choice, not for the healthy option, but for the colourful option. Most adults, when they look at coach training, are looking for the colourful option. They're not looking for the healthy option. So I'm hoping that you can make yourselves an informed choice. And this program may not be for you, but at least you can go away and say, okay, you may need to develop as a coach and you want to learn the essential neuroscience and this fairly new way of approaching the way we coach individuals by understanding what's happening in the brain, but making good choices for yourselves so that you can get the results for your clients and we can all together make the world a better place. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Let me wrap up with one more part, and that is the investment, because I know that's a question that's going to be asked. This is usually 4,970 Singapore dollars. Please note this is Singapore dollars, not US dollars, which is about 4,000 US. But committing to join this program for this particular group, which is going to start in August for the international group, is 4,125 Singapore dollars. And I've got a, a payment plan over three months that you can pay so that you can spread out the cost. I would like you to be in a position to make an informed choice about how you develop further as a coach. Whether you're going to go into career coaching, leadership coaching, executive coaching, or if you want to call it mentoring, that's absolutely fine. What we're looking at is being able to get the results your clients need in the way they want to achieve their results. That's it from me. Thank you so much for joining me. And let me open the floor up to your questions. If you can raise your hand using the My Mood, that would help me identify. I can unmute you or you can unmute yourself. Just don't please all talk at once. I'm going to stop the recording in a moment, but uh, are there any questions for now?